Hello friends, welcome back to more Reddit stories about entitled people, insane people, and everything in between. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get right into today's Reddit posts. My first restraining order. Apparently, I'm not allowed to snow blow my own driveway. Late last year our house was ruined from water intrusion in the roof. It's been a massive insurance claim and as part of that, the insurance company has been paying for us to rent a house nearby. We moved into this place recently and it's been great so far. One of the benefits was that as part of the lease, we would have someone who would come by to snowplow the driveway. Which was great and the weekend we moved in, there was a massive snowstorm. 60 plus mile per hour winds and the driveway at our new place was snowed in. The plow guys never showed up, so I basically shrugged it off, got my snowblower, we brought ours to this place, and cleared the driveway. I messaged the owner and asked if she could share the plow guy's phone number so I could message him. She did, and surprise surprise, it was actually someone we knew. Small town. This guy has a reputation, but we never had any problems with him. So I sent him a message and said that we were living at this place, and that I had my trailer parked in the driveway and would need him to keep the snow banks pushed out so I could turn it around properly. I also offered to help keep the parts he couldn't reach clear with my snowblower, since plowing around a trailer can be a pain. By the way, this is a super massive driveway and parking area. I have four trailers parked and there is still tons of room. They are also parked in places out of the way of his push paths. For what it's worth, if he had said to me, sorry I can't plow your driveway as is, I would have been like, no problem at all, I will take care of it. I had no expectations of him at all and was fully prepared to do it myself. But he said all was good and told me not to bother snowblowing, as he would be by with his machines to clear things up. Well, not long after, another storm came by. One to two feet of snow on our driveway and my wife can't get out. So I got up, started the snowblower, and cleared the driveway. By the way, this is not a quick process. It takes me about an hour to do the whole thing. His employee with the loader shows up at 10pm that night sees the driveway looks clear and drives on by to his next stop, a house close by. I didn't make a fuss about it because I get it. Maybe we are the last on the route, but I can't just sit inside all day and wait. I just thought, well, this guy got a freebie on me, aka he didn't have to do the work. A short bit of time went by and I woke up to go snowmobiling. We had a fresh 18 inches of snow on the driveway. The plow guy hasn't come, and I had to depart at 8.15 to meet a friend at the trailhead. My trailer weighs 7,000 pounds and it's 28 feet long, enclosed and holds 5 sleds. My big truck with brand new top of the line snow tires can't pull that thing up a hill in 18 inches of fresh snow. So I got my snowblower out, cleared the path from the trailer to the main road and off I went. I got back at 4pm. They still weren't there so I cleared the rest of the driveway so I could turn around and park the trailer. Their guy drove by at 10.30pm at night. Now here's where the crazy starts. The owner texted me today and said, Do not snowblow your driveway anymore. You are taking money out of my pocket. To which I responded that I have no interest in snowblowing my driveway and would prefer for them to do it, but that I need them to come early in the AM because we work and need to get out of the driveway, and I can't get my trailer out without a clear path. I've tried. He called me immediately after that and all hell broke loose. The phone call went like this. You better stop doing what you are doing because we are contracted to plow that house and you are causing me to lose money every time you do it. You need to learn how to just deal with it when it snows. I told him I was dealing with it. If I can't get my car out of the driveway, I clear it. I don't have time to hope they show up. During the call, he called me a f***ing and said I needed to learn how to drive my car like a man that I should go park my trailer in town the day before, and that I was not allowed to plow my own driveway. He then told me how my house was the lowest on his priority list, but he still felt entitled to the money for the plow fees. I didn't know this, but apparently his contract is a base monthly rate, and a very large payment for every extra plow when the snow is above 6 inches. Our insurance pays the homeowner directly, so we aren't really aware of this. But anyway, the call got heated with him yelling at me to stop effing him over, and how I'm apparently a dumbass and I'm not allowed to clear my own driveway. At this point, I basically said that if it's such a problem, perhaps I'll just call the owners and suggest they cancel the contract. I'm the one paying for it. I do have a budget with insurance, and this is a line item. So why have someone who treats me like crap? From here on out, it got worse. 
He started making threats about how if I get the contract cancelled, he is gonna come down here and deal with me, and lots of other things not worth saying, corresponding to threats against myself and family. I ended the call, then immediately called the local police department, filed the report, a case was open and I was referred to the sheriff's office. I also called the owners, who were appalled by what had happened. They immediately sent him a note stating he is to no longer come by the property and cancelled his service. To add to this, it's not the first time he has done something like it. The sheriff's department is very familiar with him, as are many people in town. So yeah, that's where we are, and feel free to add thoughts and advice. We have security cameras all over the property and we'll be following up with the authorities. So what a day it's been. Entitled mother wants her son to use a gun, breaks it in a tantrum. In my early to mid teenage years, I was in the Boy Scouts, and my troop was one of many in the nearby area, so we would host a recruitment event once or twice a year to try to convince the kids in the Cub Scouts to join our troop instead of the others. Each time we hosted these events, there would be a series of activities, like crossing a homemade rope bridge, riding a homemade zip line, cooking challenges, archery, and sometimes some form of rifle challenges. The kids would only be allowed to use airsoft or BB guns, depending on who brought what for the event, but occasionally the scouts would be allowed to use 22 rifles after the Cub Scouts had finished, in order to try to earn a merit badge. The Cub Scouts would usually watch, and some would get disgruntled about not being able to shoot real guns, but the parents were usually more understanding. We would sometimes let the parents jump in with the rifles or airsoft if they wanted to, if there was an excess of ammo after the scouts had taken their turn. One year, we set up the activities and I was assigned to run the firing range. We had brought airsoft guns and made little targets out of styrofoam plates for kids to shoot at. I had them all practice correct safety and range practices, and the kids had a lot of fun. Afterwards, some scouts set up to use a real rifle on the range, and we had the area cleared so it was safe. Some kids were watching and I set up to take some shots myself. I was prone in shooting when I felt someone tap me on my back. I put my rifle on safe and laid it on its side before turning around. One of the kids' mothers was standing over me and had her arms crossed. I could hear her through my ear protection and she said, Excuse me, but why can't my kid use these? He's very upset that you all can use real guns and he just had to use a toy. I responded with, because he's still at a young age that it'd be dangerous to let them use a real rifle. There's always a chance a kid that age might get carried away or forget that the gun's real, or something else like turning around on the firing line with the gun that could easily get someone or your child killed. Of course, the entitled mom was having none of that. My son is absolutely capable of doing anything someone like you can do, so let him use a real gun. You're also just a child, so don't tell the grown-ups what to do. I believe I was 14 at the time. I replied with, well, it's not even up to me, but the rules are that only some of us are allowed to use this range right now, and you're causing a hazard for everyone else, as well as distracting the other shooters. Go talk to... Entitled Mom cuts me off with, don't tell me what to do, give me that. Entitled Mom went for the gun, so I instantly went to eject the clip in the chambered round. It was a semi-automatic rifle. Just as I do, Entitled Mom rips the gun out of my hand and swings it around wildly. There, now let my son take your spot. It's at this point that everyone else gets up because of the obvious danger this idiot is placing everyone in, and one of the scout leaders, a parent of the scout who has a role in the troop, comes over. The scout leader starts yelling at Entitled Mom while she hands her son the rifle. Put that down. Everyone else clear the range. Entitled Mom just looks at him and snorts, then says, My son is responsible and can do what he wants. If these kids can use the guns, why can't my son? The scout leader responds with, You're no longer welcome here. You're going to need to leave. You can leave your son with us if you want to call your husband to take over, but you can't be here anymore. You're a danger to yourself and everyone around you because you're so stupid that you can't even see what you're doing wrong. As an aside, this scout leader has always been more or less to the point and blunt on serious topics, because honestly, sometimes you just need to tell someone they're being stupid. Entitled mom and scout leader yell for a minute back and forth. Entitled mom's son is still holding the rifle, and he decides he might as well try to shoot it. He moves to shoot a target and complains when it won't shoot. Mom, the gun's broken. 
Entitled Mom takes it and looks at it and turns to the scout leader. Is this a joke? What the hell kind of shit are you even using? It's broken. She throws the gun. This was actually my rifle that I had brought for the event, on the ground, and the scope I had on it audibly breaks. At this point, I'm done with this crap and run up to the Entitled Mom. You just broke my rifle, you b Entitled Mom tries to slap me, but is stopped by the scout leader, who basically manhandles her to the parking lot, forces her to get into her car with her son, and then leave. The scout leader came back and apologized for what happened, and offered to have the gun repaired on his own dime, since he felt guilty about it happening while he was in charge. Everything afterwards was fun, and the rest of the scouts had a great time. My rifle was fine, and the scout leader paid for a new scope that was better than the one I had on previously. Entitled Mom was later billed for the damages once the scout leader tracked her down by word of mouth from the other scout's parents, so it all worked out in the end, I guess. Wanna discipline me for being right? I got you. I work for a freight delivery company, drive a semi-truck, and usually go out with 10 to 15 deliveries a day. Our policy is that when you deliver to a residence, you have to take a picture with the work phone as an additional proof of delivery. That has morphed into now if the delivery receipt, DR, says residential, you have to take a picture of it, regardless if it's going to a business or a house. There are so many small details on a delivery receipt that can get missed, so this is an important detail. One day last week I have a delivery for Laura Lopez, name changed. It was being delivered to a construction company that Laura is an employee of. The delivery receipt does not say it's residential. I make the delivery and leave. No picture. Next morning, my bitch of a supervisor says, I have a write-up for you. Puzzled, I ask her for what? For the Laura Lopez delivery yesterday. It was residential. I explained to her that it was at a business, and the delivery receipt did not say residential. She wasn't having it. I should also mention that her and I butt heads often, and she's been trying to get rid of me for some time. I told her that we need to go talk to my manager about it, so we do and he sides with me because she has no ground to stand on. This infuriates her. I tell her that under no circumstances will this be an issue again. That day is when I start my malicious compliance. I take pictures with the work phone at every stop. What happens is when I hit depart on the work phone, it sends a pop-up on her computer with the picture, and she has to acknowledge it before she can do anything else on her computer. I crashed her computer three times that day. At one stop, I took 20 pictures. I get a call from her telling me that I have to stop taking pictures. I politely tell her that I'm covering my ass and not going against policy. I'm giving you an order. I laugh and hang up. Sure as crap, she wrote me up for it. I don't even argue. I say we need to take it to my manager. I walk in and he says, what now? I tell him the story. He looks at her, takes the write up and rips it up. Are you seriously writing him up for overperforming? She had no words, and I still take a picture at every stop because I'm petty. Alright guys, that's going to be all for today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, and also don't forget to subscribe. So take care, and I'll see you all next time.